Uh, so I believe um tick, the TikTok band here yeah, is in good faith. I mean, um a lot of US um digital platforms have been banned in China. So yeah. Um if America wants to take that route, I mean even they may not be diplomatic and Guys, welcome back to another episode of the South Tunnels with myself, that your be and Max or Dankwa. And Max, how I didn't you talk? Max or Dankwa, welcome to South Tunnels, usual voice. The Silas, by the way. Silas, talk. Yes. Oh, I wanted to introduce Silas, please. We have we have the biggest. No, Rana is a big man. I mean, can't yeah, see. Sorry. Yeah, so we are yeah, recording yeah. via Zoom. <laughs> we are recording via Zoom, and Salas it's, can't see the gold plating in his glasses. I see how my glasses are plastic. Yeah. <laughs> gold, there's gold plating in his glasses because he's a big man. Let Let's give oh, him respect. Yes, so yes, we yes. Have, let's give him respect. We have the man, the myth, the legend. Legend. We have, um, Geek Silas. Hey, do you remember how we got that day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't I think we should, we'll, we'll talk about that later <laughs> in the episode. All right, so we have the, the myth, the legend, Silas Asamoa. Yay, audience clapping. Pa, 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 pa. Um, as usual, there's no budget, there's no um, budget for this show, so we don't have audience to clap. So, Silas, um, Silas is currently, I'm, I'm looking through his, um, hey, Jesus. So he's, data, he's a data scientist slash machine learning engineer. Mm-hmm. My heart. Um, <laughs> with with, with Stanbeck Van Ghana. Um, he was with... Oh, so if you left that in media, ow, you won't talk. So he, 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 he was a junior you know, data no. scientist at um, uh, Mimo, Mino Health. Mino Health. Yeah, I love Mino Health, yeah. yeah, I love um, he is, he is um, a mentor with Innovate Ghana, and he does so many other things. And he is here with us, and we are really happy he had time to join us. Um, and yeah. even though I'm introducing him, this is a boys only episode. I mean, because um, Salas, Salas is an OG of the podcast. We started together, yeah. but now he's a big man, so he has left me. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to hear my voice, you can go to season one, episode one. Yeah. Let me feature yeah. in that. Yeah. And I think yeah. we have another episode as well where we spoke about mm-hmm. like educational reforms and stuff. So mm-hmm. there's that too. All right. All right. So um guys, welcome back to another episode again. And um, I know I repeated myself, but then um we started this, we started um this season. And um, Max, what do you think is what was was new in the in the in the system? Who has released Me? something? Yeah. Okay, do you want us to just jump right to it? Let's just jump right into it. Yeah. Okay. So the one of the big stories is Oracle is now in the bid to buy TikTok US, and um, what's the name of the Oracle owner? He's a very famous guy. Uh, you guys yeah, Larry, know the Sultan of Larry Ellison. Yeah, Larry Ellison. Larry Ellison. Yeah, Larry mm-hmm. Ellison just jumped into the free. So that's one of the biggest news. And also, US um, trade ban on Huawei will extend to components in Huawei devices that are still sourced from US companies. That means they are really trying to strong arm Huawei into not being able to produce at all. So that's one of the biggest first techers. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's more anyway. Uh, but but Salah, do you use TikTok? Uh no, not exactly, but I have, I have the app. I mean you, um, you know the fear. <laughs> you have the app but you don't use it. Yeah, I don't use it. Also, I mean like with if you have an Apple device, you uh, as in like for for some apps you don't trust how your data will be used and stuff like that. You use sign with app. So then that's what I use. So it's not exactly linked to any of my personal accounts, like either Facebook or Gmail. 
well, I, I, I signed on using sign on Apple. So at least there's a layer of privacy that I can enjoy from that. I don't know if that means that they can like get access to my phone data or whatsoever, but at least that, that sort of cuts the amount that of data they get from you. are also wary of the security threats. You don't believe it's all political hooks or anything like that. I mean, there's some level of truth to it. Given, given, given the history China has in terms of like collecting data from other countries using uh, their mobile apps that like usually go global. So, I mean, there's a certain amount of truth to it. But for me, I've, I've not seen how it affects my lifestyle in any way. <laughs> I don't think I'm that much hey, serious about that. <laughs> they should go and take my data. <laughs> oh, Mr. Mr. Cry. Yeah, 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 I've, 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 never, I've never thought twice about downloading it. E, so you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't want TikTok videos, you don't enjoy them. Ah, YouTube, yeah, I said YouTube will give me TikTok videos. Facebook will give me yeah, TikTok videos. I watch the YouTube Twitter versions, will give me. Yeah. Exa exactly. Twitter will give me uh, TikTok videos. So uh, they, they, they've done a way, they've, actually they did a good job in infiltrating the already existing social media platforms to draw users onto their platform. Mm. How about them? For someone like me who has become um, security conscious, um, I think it's also a good, way for, um, it's a good way for me to enjoy the platform without necessarily registering or downloading the app. Yeah, I think that... that, 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 that so, so, what do you guys think about Mark Zuckerberg wanting to buy TikTok, then treating on that position, then creating his own copycat? What do you think? <laughs> hmm. I mean, ah, wait, I think, uh, let me ask you a question. All these decisions with respect to um, Mark Zuckerberg's um, either a barrier or steal the idea, is it him making the decision or is Facebook that has been collectively making that decision? Mark Zuckerberg is it. Facebook. He has a controlling interest. Like the yeah, biggest but, but yeah, Facebook has but a very powerful board. Be, yeah, exactly. And, so and, and it has be outgrown other, him himself. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Because I feel like, um, for instance, if you have a board of directors who like make or influence decisions, you obviously can't compare like your ten percent step of a company to like one percent times ten or times twenty. Like mm -hmm. if twenty people are saying this is against you, there's an individual, you can't you don't exactly have a say in it. And obviously the other stakeholders are like that's my biased opinion though, but I think they would mm -hmm. rather want to look for profit making ventures that would bring in more money for Facebook as compared to like protecting users' data and all that. Because basically, Facebook is a free um, social media service. So basically, they have to find ways and uh, means of leveraging that platform to like make money. So anything yeah. that would get into that direction is obviously something they would pick. That's my biased but, opinion. Though. But TikTok, TikTok has been fighting back until uh, it was clear that they'd been given the ultimatum uh, 15th September to be sold or be banned in the US. Hey, they've been fighting back in that. Let me see what's <laughs> yeah. let, let, let me see if they've been banned. Uh -huh. Continue. Yes. Yeah. No, 15th like September. Your, your, your landlord ah, is 15th like September. You. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's true. Like your landlord is like you go away. Yeah, it's time. Yeah. And yeah, so you know, they came out with a TikTok fund for creatives, $200 yeah, they, million. Dollars. Fund yeah, yeah, yeah. creative and all that. So I think, but this is not TikTok's first mortal blow. In India, they've been banned outright. They are not there. They've been sacked. So we should tell you that yeah, yeah. this whole but, geopolitical but the Indian storm is more political. It's yeah, way, yeah, yeah, way yeah. more political than American zone that they are trying to mask it with security. Yeah. But I, 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 I think the political was, factor is sort of like in the mix in. Everywhere, like TikTok faces a problem. Yeah, in the US, India, I think other parts of Europe as well. Like it all has China, to do with nah. and how China is collecting data to I don't know build some. You know, like with the advent of AI and everything, no one is scared about what people could use yeah. data to build AI. So, like if you have people's data, you could build something like I, 
AGI, which is a general artificial intelligence. That can basically do anything and mimic any uh, possible human cognitive. Mm -hmm. um, like the deep fake and stuff. Yeah, the deep fake and stuff. Like, I don't know if anyone saw this, um, where there's a video on Twitter, I saw this like two days ago, um, Michelle Obama uh, slandering Trump, seeing that Trump is, um, is not the right person to vote for and people shouldn't yeah, vote for him. Yeah, first DNC Congress, yeah, sorry. Yeah. So to me, it looked like sort of like a deep fake video. I don't know how true that is. No, it was real. It was, was real. real. Yeah, that, that yeah. one was real. It was it was a, a snippet of the entire Congress, the convention. The entire convention was digital. Yeah. So that that, that was a speech she made. It is what it is. <laughs> but, but, the video, the video quality, I I saw from my phone looked like something that could, uh, that could go for a deep fake video. So I actually mm. that was a deep fake. I mean, I didn't what watch are, the entire what, video. Just so. one of the fears of um this whole TikTok and all that is also global uh, state sponsored surveillance by the Chinese That's Communist much. Party. I've seen it uh, as a threat, and for some reason, I think Africans have not been particularly worried about data or our data being used against us. Can you imagine most of the uh, 4G infrastructure in Africa is Huawei? We don't really care. Is, is that not a problem? Or well, because we don't have money, so we can't talk. It's not exactly about money. I mean, our data is our data. We don't exactly need money to protect your data. You just need to make sure that if someone is taking your data, they go through the right means and processes to actually access your data. Now, the thing about the, this is my biased opinion and working in data science, you tend to realize that now part of the world people oh, so don't need really... data scientist. Oh wow. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a do something with my life. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, continue, boss, I'm sorry. It, it, <laughs> oh my in, in our part of the world, people don't really rely on data to actually do anything. So it was more or less like our decision making is based on intuition. So like when, when you sleep and you wake up, you feel like, okay, you should move money from here to there to do something. Or you know that, oh, I'm used to send and to put 1,000 CDs into this business. So you feel like, would actually go without actually That's right. thinking about oh mm -hmm. what was the context under which that investment was made what mm -hmm. connections did he make what people did he uh, make contact with and all that so I feel I like in Africa we don't really do that no we don't we reason but we don't reason with enough data yeah enough with data as we don't make enough data uh, driven decisions also, so let's just say that we don't have a developed knowledge economy or something like that. Hello. Yeah. The Silas, has he dropped off? Yeah, sorry. No, no, no. A call, a call came through, that's right, sorry. Yeah, I'm saying that, is, is that to say? Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so, I said, is that, is, is that suggest that the knowledge economy in Africa is not well developed? Yeah, in, in my opinion, I, I think it's not well developed. But what do you say about our infrastructure with regards to technology? The fact that none are really native or none are really founded by Africans from our data centers to our... 4G backbone or fiber optics, everything is either this big internet companies like Facebook, like Google, like you name them, they laying these um, deep sea cables and what's not. How does that put Africa? We are still consumers. We are not owning our infrastructure with respect to technology. Won't that have an effect on data and how it's being protected? Yeah, yeah, it definitely does, Chris. Um, Basically, if someone is making something for you, they have more say in how that particular thing is regulated or how processes are done on that particular application or server. But Africa hasn't made that investment into building things for ourselves. So it's, it's more or less like, I don't know, was the last two years or three years ago when the GDPR came into full force? Everyone who used any such application was bounded by something 
that was done on another continent. So basically, yeah. Europe is determining how uh, data is collected on these Africans. That's because the people in that part of the world actually care. They might not necessarily be the ones developing the applications and stuff. Because mo most of the software we are consuming comes from the US. Mm -hmm. But then they realize that if you are using my data, I should obviously have a scene how that data is covered. So regardless of the fact that we are not actually producing applications or building like software infrastructure and stuff, we can definitely have a scene how our data is uh, consumed and utilized. But I'm, I'm, Silas, and being, I'm not too opposed to the idea of a TikTok US ban because as we speak, Facebook and oh, they should ban them. They should ban them. Yeah, they should big them. platforms have yeah. been banned for years in China. Exactly. No one has China. better than I. No yeah. one cares. So I think it's only fair. Yeah. But Salas, do you have like a raster thing going on there with your hair or is it just <laughs> <laughs> there are some things <laughs> we don't done. talk about too. <laughs> oh, um, I mean, you can talk about it. I mean bosom. Like... Bosom. Bosom <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, still, yeah. So when lockdown started, uh, now even before lockdown, like I was, we went, we went remote before lockdown started. So that was mm. uh, the end of February, and I already had an Afro by then. So when I came home, I, I just stopped trimming my hair. It, I stopped combing my hair, and eventually oh, awesome. that led to this. Awesome. Oh, so you haven't been to the office since March? No, I, be, I was there last month. Few weeks back, okay. because my uh, I had a photo of my machine, so I had to take it back to get okay, it. Okay, okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. Mm. yeah. Anyway, uh, so I believe um, tick, the TikTok ban here yeah, is in good faith. I mean, um, a lot of US um, digital platforms have been banned in China, so yeah. Um, if America wants to take that route. I mean, even they may not be diplomatic and all, but then I mean, it's it's okay to retaliate because um, China gave certain reasons concerning um as we initially um stated espionage and um um data being um leaked um taken by other countries and all to protect their citizens and also to to empower the communist party some more. Uh -huh. yeah. So I believe if if they take if they use that excuse, it makes sense. But then if Trump wants to use it for his own personal and uh, <laughs> fine wine. And no na and no and no and no na mentia say. Okay, me yeah. I actually and I actually have okay. that opinion though about them banning TikTok because uh, given how strong their platform has become and it's partially has to do with the creators that come from US. Because mm -hmm. more social justice messages were sent to TikTok. And basically, right now, if you look like a big artists like Drake um, and other hip hop stars, you tend to realize that their their songs move faster with how it's distributed yeah. on TikTok or how quickly exactly. people are able to make. I remember, I heard Savage, I heard Savage first on TikTok. Exactly. And it was later, yeah. that I even Shazam the TikTok to know that it was, it was <laughs> Megan V Stallion who who did that song, and I was so shocked. Yeah. That, that song was bugging me too because early lockdown looks like everyone was I'm a savage. Ah, <laughs> so she realized that through TikTok, even though she didn't put her song on TikTok, through TikTok, yeah. she was able to like maybe I don't know, gain more streams for okay, her well, music just because of yeah. Yeah. So I feel I like I should just thing. solve People the thought... digital policy issue and get on with it. Because it's just too much for the US. It's China. So, yeah, I mean, like China, we don't talk solve data privacy. We talk, <laughs> we'll take a different route in collecting data <laughs> data for me. Yeah, that's but true. For, for me, it's it's um one thing is that um a lot of people were even questioning the numbers on on um, TikTok, but they forgot how powerful TikTok is because TikTok people can get about twenty two million views in a short time, but then now yeah. that a lot of a lot of TikTok influencers are. Uh, um, jumping ship to YouTube. You realize that now they are making so many views from YouTube too. Because you yeah, have yeah. Um, Addison Ray and Charlie Demilio and all those people. Don't ask me how I know them. But then you have them. And how do you know them? <laughs> how do you know them? <laughs> you know they matter. So you, you have them making 55 million, 100 million on TikTok. 
and they are making those numbers on YouTube per daily um, 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 uploads. They are making about 12 million um, views on YouTube. Um, let, let, let me even see if I can find um, Charlie D'Amelio's um, um, this is, um, what's her name? Yeah, and, so and her views on that, I'm coming on her I'm, views on on you um on YouTube. The recent one that was one day was three million, followed by seven point six million in four days, four point two in two weeks, fourteen in two months, five point nine in two months, nine point six in two months. That's million eight point one in two months, twenty four in six months, twelve million in eight months. For YouTube so standards, that's astronomical, but TikTok yes. standards is low. Uh huh. But then, but then yeah. you see. A lot of people are are moving from those platforms to theirs because I realize that um, Vine also Vine was there. Vine was the one Twitter after, killed. Yes, Vine, <laughs> Vine was there before. Wow. Um, you had to um, emphasize TikTok. that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and Vine with Vine, a lot of Vine influencers were able to jump ship early. So you have David Dobrik, the Vlog Squad, and their people. Yeah. Logan Paul and Jake Paul. You have others. Kim people Batch. Yeah. Kim Batch uh-huh, and his squad. They jump mm-hmm. shit from Vine to YouTube. I realized that their views were not as strong as this when they moved initially. Even like mm-hmm. Zakoshi. To pick up. Zakoshi too hard to pick up after some time. So you realize that this one, they um, they were they easily jump ship and they started getting astronomical views because um, TikTok itself is a global platform. The fact that TikTok started outside the U.S., meant that a lot of people across the world use it as compared to mm-hmm. US apps like YouTube and Instagram that unless you have mm-hmm. a VPN you can't use it within China. Mm. Yeah that's true. Okay enough about TikTok. Next biggest news Fortnite being banned from, from Apple <laughs> stores and they said, I said, Google I love the trap <laughs> I love the trap yeah. they set for Apple. Uh, you saw the video. You saw the video. Funny, funny enough, it's not just Apple. It's been coming for Google as well. Yeah, Google. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, do, do, those who don't know the backstory, so basically, um, um, Apple um um has this rule Ep- that yeah. has this rule yeah. that um all in app purchases should be done through Apple, so that all in app purchases of apps that are within the App Store should be done through Apple. So meaning, um, if I have an app and I, I want people to pay for something within the app, within the app, I have to pass through Apple's payment system. But then, um, Apple was going to get a cut, and I think Fortnite, Fortnite, percent, yeah, thirty percent, exactly. Fortnite realized that, that um, um, one, they were being cheated, and also two, um, it, it was too restrictive, so they yeah. decided to set up. <laughs> A cheaper option that you have to you pay directly to in- Fortnite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, meaning in principle, anyone who does the in app in app purchases would purchase directly to the Fortnite company. I think what's the name of the mother company, Kara? Uh, Epic, Epic Games. Games. Epic Games. Epic Games. Uh-huh. Epic Games. Yeah. So that means no commission guy, for Apple. Zero commission for Apple. So Apple saw that yeah. and immediately took them off. And it looks like everything was a setup because immediately Apple took them off. They released a video and they presented the <laughs> lawsuit to Apple, yeah, like just I think like it was that. A sixty something page document. Exactly, yeah. and and that would take a day. And is, <laughs> exactly to to prepare such a document. So it was so crazy. I think um, Google too followed Apple, but then did they have the same challenge with Google? I don't know why Google decided to um, go with Apple like that. That's yeah. that's actually very true. Um, I no, no, I, I think because I have to Google. I think you should fact check that. Yeah, Google. No, what I know is that Google retaliated almost immediately, but I do not know why. Yeah, they all did. They all did. They typically, Google has this payment platform issue. I don't know whether, but Apple's own has been problematic since a lot of other Apple, app companies yeah, have complained about it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but I think Apple's Apple's own had to deal with how huge um, revenue has been generated on platforms to the extent that. Uh, like developers felt like Apple could reduce it because if in a year you are generated over 30, no, no, in a year, the app store generated over 70 billion dollars, they definitely felt like they could get like some tax cuts. In the oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 70 billion. <laughs> you are, right, right now, Apple is worth 2 trillion by the way. Yeah, they doubled their market cap within yeah. the pandemic. 2 trillion. Wow. 
Now, if, if you want to, if you want to break that, and they have like hundred and ninety three billion in cash. Yes, <laughs> most of it is hiding in Northern Ireland. By the way, they are tax haven. Hundred and ninety three. US billion US to put that in, in perspective, cash. to put that in perspective, Ghana's economy is worth sixty-four billion dollars. And and let them see JJ. Ghana is so that you feel sorry for yourself. Sixty-four. Yeah, it, it's very depressing. Honestly, it's very depressing. <laughs> and the whole of Africa see. is worth one point two trillion. So the whole of Africa. Jeff Bezos is worth one ninety one ninety point six billion. So that means they have more in cash than Jeff Bezos' net worth. <laughs> yeah. I mean, his, his network is also uh, practically influenced by the uh, stock market. So. Exactly. Yeah. No, but what I'm yeah. saying is that this one is, is cash or cash. This one network tomorrow it can be wiped off. Like <laughs> cash. Yeah. We have cash. So back to the issue. Um, Fortnite, Fortnite, Apple, Google, all this whole thing. I think Fortnite is making a very valid case, but someone could argue that they are what they are because of how huge a platform they are on and someone argued that Wrong. with fortnite the ban is, no, no no fortnite started fortnite in a pc PC version on ps no on playstation yeah, yeah, no yeah. but no but and they on, said the on, apple the app store has given fortnite access to over 1 billion electronic devices that's yeah, a platform that's true but yeah Chris, i understand no, but what i'm the popularity the popularity mainly came from the uh, app store as compared to you see like if for the playstation squad like it's a very no, within the gaming community it was a huge game before they came to the app store that's what i, I, I want us to oh, yeah. talk about but that so, actually increased their uh, market pool to like this yeah, exactly, exactly much like yeah, pubg yeah. you know pubg yeah yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's true. PUBG. pubg is yeah, big I, in I, india PUBG. typically yeah. an android based Ghana game cry, a lot of people yeah. uh, like to talk about it on twitter yeah, PUBG, PUBG and Call of Duty. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, they're having communities around, like giving communities in Ghana that pay those games. Mm, you know but, I'm paid too. I'm paid is big. I, I saw one opinion. <laughs> I saw one opinion on TechCrunch that was saying that um, Fortnite's bottom line has been dealt a blue recently. They're not raking in as much funds as they preferred. So this might be a tactic to wean themselves off this platform for Apple <laughs> to make money. You never know. You never know. I, I mean, but it I, would make I, sense. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah, continue. I think um, Apple, um, they, 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 they can win themselves off these platforms, but then it's difficult to do that for Apple because with um, Android, they can just um, have um, an APK and, and, and have it independent of Apple. Just put it on their website. So you download it. Yeah. And you can have yeah. access to their system, but then with Apple, you can't download an app beside um, app directly onto your phone from outside the app store without having to yeah. jailbreak your device. People say you want seamless ecosystem. That's what you get. Yeah. But it comes with the security benefit. Like for oh, yeah. example, me. I, I mean, me the that's... Apple ecosystem is. Mm-hmm. Tell, tell, yeah, to, tell him. Tell him. The Apple ecosystem is very good. Like, uh-huh, the mere fact that when you move from one point to another, like, from device to device, like, your content or information is just moving around without you having to do that manual work of moving your data from... But like, either way, I, I support Epic Games. I support Epic Games. You have an iPad. You could just go onto your bed, open that same application, and just switch to it. Salas, with all the text... Everything is basically connected. Hey, this Apple agenda there, you're pushing it far. I said with all <laughs> with all the perks of with all the perks of Apple's seamless ecosystem and all, I think Epic Games has begun this conversation where they might have to break this monopoly that Apple is exercising. 30%. That's 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 like what Uber has been doing to their drivers. It's crazy. It's, it's slavery. It's bad. But I see that now um, both both is taking over. Yeah. yeah. Both is taking but over I, that I, market. I, but I, I sort of, there's a way they could have gone about it. Because an example is, um, I think some years back, I was on Prime Media, also mm-hmm. faced a similar situation. But due to how big Amazon is, Apple actually allowed them to use their, their own implement system within the app. 
because of the number of people that were actually using um, Amazon Prime Video on mm-hmm. like they had their iPad and their iPhones. So uh, I think it was through that Epic Games also realized that you know why why is it that like Amazon is given that um, should I say um, exclusive uh, treatment as compared to them. So I, I feel like if they had I don't know proper negotiation and all those stuff. I think there should be a renegotiation be because. The amount they give the Apple um, App Store is is huge. Uh huh. So at least, yeah. yeah. But, but I also do with understand. This. Mm-hmm. So you also have to understand Apple in the sense that Apple is very critical about user user data and privacy, such that for third party payment systems, sometimes you might not be able to track the flow, the the flow of transactions and amount of data that is passing through because that one is dependent on the third party application. So you might not know what data you are stealing from an iPhone. So it makes sense that like they make that statement that because they want to put it, but sir, sir, it, it, is it is these price. kinds of it is these kinds of acts by these huge tech giants or behemoths that play into the hands of those who favor the breaking up of those bigger than life tech companies that Amazon is too big, uh, uh some, some, no, not Samsung. When I started to Samsung for a while, Apple is too big. Facebook, Facebook. No, but Samsung has already yeah. broken. They they broken themselves up. So I mean, exactly, really exactly. Now. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. so that's, that's 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 one. I mean, but I don't. I, I don't think any company should have a monopoly, and Apple has a lot of monopoly. Even anything at all today, they are record why, on Wall Street. I don't know why people are not talking about the illusion of choice car companies and even glasses manufacturers um, give us. You know, um, uh, Volkswagen Group. They own yeah. like a lot of um, car brands. Yeah. The VW Group is own a lot. <laughs> yeah, let, let me let me be mention let me mention them quite yeah, yeah. it'll, it'll so, be surprising to know the luxury brands that are actually are not good to argue like, it's crazy you. oh where's the list girl yeah, because like even glasses manufacturers like you see they've written gucci they've written um 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 tom ford what and what on it okay is the same company that's manufacturing it all and then they'll, they'll just change, change, they'll just change, change um, the names on the brand. Uh, oh. Hello. Okay, so, yeah, hello, Maxo. Uh-huh, yeah, so yeah. we have, we have the brands yeah. that we have uh, LD, we have Vader, we have Secunda, we have Seeds, we have Porsche, or is it Porsche? We have Lamborghini, Bentley, oh, Porsche, Porsche uh huh. We have Bentley, we have Bugatti, um, we have um Supra uh, no Cupra. We have Scania. We have Dugati. We have Man. We have um um Traton. We have there are so many other companies, Vibre companies be inside it. All these are the VW. It's like, <laughs> hey, it's like it's an illusion of choice because you don't even the internal parts. Cause they even share the parts amongst themselves. So you see yeah. um, this car that will have um, this other car's engine or this other car's car key. And it's... <laughs> yeah, the funny thing is that they don't, they don't make it a brand deal. So like if a Bugatti car, regardless of uh, the other adopted parts, it, it still keeps its name. So you don't, they don't slap, like, see they've added a Porsche part to it or whatever. They keep their brand as it is. So yeah, everyone has that vision that, okay, yeah, you're paying the same person. Everyone has an illusion that this is. Uh, they Bugatti. always make a certain. They always make this. Is it antitrust argument where they say big conglomerates which are constantly um, what's the word eating up smaller uh, companies or what for lack of a better term yes eating up smaller companies and yeah. then uh, uh, valuing themselves on the stock market in that manner. That way they can give more dividends while crashing other competition means that they are on a road that would create certain disaster for the market. So I'm 
Amazon is by far one of the biggest retail or e-commerce giants in North America, and in fact, some parts of Europe. It doesn't look like they're going to face any kind of competition anytime soon. And the bigger they get, the less likely they can have competition. And you know, when there's monopoly, there's difficulty in letting them be uh, obeying regulations and what's not. So it's a very solid case. Let me look at history, Rockefeller. Rockefeller, when he created this huge standard oil, you saw that the US Senate or Congress had to break it up because they yeah. felt that, yes, it's getting too That's big. Too big. So I think it makes a valid point. Look but at MTN, the way game, they are in Ghana and what they are the best about... network. Look at the way they mess up. <laughs> eh? True. What you're talking about right now, in 10 years, we'll have the same conversation about Tesla. I see it coming. I, I think Tesla's valuation is, doesn't make sense because if you look at the numbers they are, they are churning out, and if you look at um, the, even the deliveries they make, they, are, they, they fail to live up to certain deadlines even for so many things. And I'm hearing that Cybertruck might even be pushed further back. Mm-hmm. I think the investor confidence in Tesla is based on the fact that in the EV market, they are the ones with the biggest foundation. But a lot of people are coming out to get their lunch. It's happening because uh, Toyota, Peugeot that we spoke about, Kia, they, they have... EV options and even I think one German manufacturer, I think VW says they will move to entirely. Don't look far, right food now. Everybody selling food in Ghana. To get to a certain point, the market will get saturated. Much everybody like how Uber started as the only Why? ride hailing app, and now they have so anyway. many options. Even Ghana, Ghana crap. Mm. <laughs> Tesla hasn't yeah. even started, though. Yeah. But but I feel like. With, Tesla with has Tesla even started. They've barely scratched the surface. Tesla will still continue to mm-hmm. grow at the retail rate of one because, yeah, but just because they are an American company, just because they are an American company, they already have like this huge market size. They are scaled up or scaled down, and given the track record of Elon you know, Musk, exactly. it, it even boils down to the second point. Where, in, in my opinion, I feel like. The reason why they are growth is skyrocketing is because of high driven marketing. So high driven marketing is when like and come and tell you the potential of a technology on a cyber truck and tell you what to expect. No, so no, like no, the uh, yeah. uh, what's the name of the car? The twenty twenty one car. Um, yeah, the roadster. Yeah, both both cars. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. So you see like the way Elon Musk came on stage and branded it and then like said so much about no, but, uh, but, 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 but the thing is that uh, with right. Elon Musk that he spoke like about the potential and showed you what people do with cars unlike you a company like 30, Samsung, Samsung you pre-order uh, with what you hear not with what you see and feel you understand uh-huh. so okay. it's like he walks the talk you see um, you, you remember GoPro <laughs> why am I saying remember GoPro like they are dead they still produce <laughs> some cameras so you yeah. see GoPro used to go GoPro's marketing used to be action cam. These are the things they can do. These are the things our company wants to do. Selling potential, <laughs> web public, skyrocketing. Oh, but, but, like yeah, yeah, yeah. but they don't they, they barely use it again as compared to like two, three years ago. Yeah. GoPro was oh, like but the iPhone the of, YouTubers, of, of, YouTubers of action also sell it cams as well. and then um, of uh, content creation. Right now, people barely use GoPros because um, they weren't oh, yeah. as innovative as they were marketed to be, and also to um, even just like Google's, um, I think Google's Glass, Google's Glass, they made a mistake. They did their marketing wrong. They marketed to the everyday user who wouldn't necessarily um, put on a glass that would let would let him see other things besides in his peripheral vision, even in his front vision besides um, what he sees normally. But they know Oculus. Um, is is rather marketing towards business solutions and marketing towards um research and industries and things like um in the health in healthcare and all those things. I realize that those are the industries that actually may use these yeah. things now, and they are the ones who are buying them. Hmm. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I, I, that, that, that's very true. And Microsoft is also using that same tactic with um, Microsoft HoloLens, where like they are basically 
uh, using VR to mimic because even telling Max that even like how mm-hmm. like, I'll I'll tell tell Max that even with new technology, it starts that's from true. research yeah. centers also, goes into yeah. businesses the, before it comes to the consumers. Because so. everything from the internet to 3D printers to regular printers to televisions and things, they start in industry. Then after industry has adopted the full, even desktops, they started in offices. After offices have adopted, people think that oh, I can have this thing in my home. Then they start looking at making it more um, commercial and getting more customers. That's why we had the PC, yeah. which is a personal computer. But then some years ago, we just had office computers that were working. And I'll be sure if in some few years, and thanks to quantum computing, we'll have supercomputers on our desktop. Right now, we have mm-hmm. about five terabyte, ten terabytes of data storage that sits on the desktop. Mm-hmm. But then that wouldn't have been possible. Exactly. Oh yeah, and and quantum computing is actually not far fetched because right right now you have um, uh, cloud providers like Microsoft Azure that are like provision supercomputer instances in the cloud. So right now, like if you can actually pay for a super cloud computer instance, you can actually purchase one and start using. And I, I feel like those things are also pushing. Um, innovation in tech because as a result of that microsoft yeah, was yeah, able yeah. to collaborate with um, open ai that's the the company that um, came up with a gpt3 model that yeah. basically has like uh, 175 billion parameters of human language they're able to like they work their talk they are selling their level. potentials so that those actually things are definitely pushing innovation <laughs> even though there's hype yeah. like they are actually working their talk Okay, so Maxo is having some technical challenges, so um, he's muted currently, and he's saying that uh, the GPT three is going to end mankind. Uh, <laughs> end mankind. He said he's scared. But I don't think it will necessarily end mankind. It will send us to a different sphere of um computing and of reason and productivity yeah. as human beings. And for me, it's mm-hmm. it oh, and, and also it comes back to my point. Now, knowledge, we we thank God for your life. Knowledge is democratized yeah. and we live in a global village. So why are our our people not trying to solve <laughs> our own problems locally and capitalizing on the access of knowledge and creating our own thing than but I mean this question if you ask this question you don't be fair. You don't be fair because a couple of episodes back a couple of episodes back I spoke to you I spoke with Robert, Nicholas Tully, Charles Adi, all those people. And I was like, <laughs> this environment to find ourselves. Common uh, post-GPS yeah. uh, infrastructure, they subcontracted it to outsiders. <laughs> Common EC database, they sub- subcontracted it to outsiders. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay, let, let's 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 ask let's ask Silas what he thinks. Me, they already know my stance. Uh huh. What does? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, I I actually don't know why that that um, that happens because look look how you like we have the capability to actually build those things. An example is Hack Club where. People have been building like great applications and stuff. And the, the funny thing is that these things people build at Hack Lab is just for show. Sure. Even though they're yeah, so that other, other things, it's usually just for show. Sure. So I actually don't know why the government goes out to do that. For instance, the GPS thing costs two million. Yeah. Is it two or three million US dollars? That thing alone can buy you a huge data center and developing an application like that like it doesn't merit that amount in my opinion because if you are paying people to mm-hmm. like if you are paying software engineers to build the application you pay product designers to design hey. and then you I, pay, I remember you pay what you shouldn't <laughs> amount to <laughs> two million I mean it's far fetched <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, like, if 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 you 
if you actually to break down costs for software development or any project like that, most costs will actually go into your infrastructure. Uh, or make the rest of the we're looking for that's why like, you can't get like, based on the your government is wasting and money. Doing on. And the way it's shown here, yeah. it's shown here. <laughs> Oh, bro. I, yeah, that, that's a lot for one software project. Yeah, I mean, they could have used they could have used one million or even less to fit, to get Chop- as an Chop- 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 that uh, Chop- even hmm. better because the twenty two million dollars mm-hmm. of such a project mm-hmm. like, given. Because hey, the way that you are hey, the general hey, practitioner. Maxwell, this is the way I should doesn't be. merit. What do we know? Exactly. What do we know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're not obliged. Is that what you're saying? But but by insurance, I don't think they have like, they are obliged come out to like give a breakdown of because we don't the details. Like, yeah. The expenses that they yeah, give. Yeah, they're like, not obliged to actually amount the contract details, the contract details are not public. I think they should. Yeah. Uh-huh. You see, that, 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 that's, that's another problem. Yeah, I mean, even though they are not, they should have, it's my problem in Ghana actually, and it comes down to the thing Maxwell said initially, that has something to do with our databases and stuff. Ghana, Ghana doesn't have, or should I say even Africa, we don't have uh, well-structured data policies that sort of govern um, how data mm-hmm. is collected and how the government is supposed to be, and, and how it reflects the, gov- the government's accountability to the people. Because if you want access to, like if you want to know what's happening in government right now or in governance, how would you be able to access that data to know, okay, the country is performing like in this direction. If not for um, wish. external economic websites and other stuff, I don't think mm. we indigenous will actually get access to that data. I see okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, the credit score of Ghana is actually like A plus. So I can invest money in the startup to do this business. Yeah. <laughs> we we don't have that. So we really need to have like serious discussions. I mean that that's up to yeah. parliament, but open yeah. data policies. But, but the people Silas, see what is I mean, so that this is a trend that a lot of us have been used to because we are failing. You study uh, a lot of government uh, be there, like you initiated be policies. We see their end without knowing and because like of poor maintenance that, culture like when they <laughs> die out or like whatever. You to drive you can don't hear them on so maybe. The workers will then will come out with a statement that we are not being paid. Classic case is the Ayalalu bus rapid transport system, which cost a lot. Had a had a centralized station that was um, sort of manning affairs, the uh, arrival time, departure time, and all that. It, they've gone under. They've gone bankrupt. No one has said anything. It's become an object of political uh, interest back and forth. People are seeing there the, the, the procurement issues. They had to put it under review and whatnot. Now it's dead, you understand? So it's, it's, just, it's, just, it's just nature. Okay, another news, Airbnb. Hmm. Hmm. Next next bit of news, Obrin and Silas. <laughs> Airbnb yeah, confidentially like files to go public. Because the last Airbnb. time I went out, I think it's like Airbnb in Ghana the, before. There was a low volume of those kind of buses in town. So. Yeah, are about to go public. No, but then this talk I for buy some. I mean, Make a check the price. If it goes. Oh. No. Oh yeah, I definitely buy some. I definitely buy some. Yeah, but it, it makes sense for them to go public. Because I mean this year they I think early the first quarter or the second quarter of the year, they should have gone public. That's um, before they knew the pandemic just hit and then just messed up 
it, it just messed up their plans and they had to they had to send they, they had to sack like 25 percent of their workforce because like and they all thank you Maggie. But basically everyone wasn't happy with how things were going but if you if you go public i, I think they even took a billion dollar loan or something just to like sustain them some security for the time but if you go security. public you know that people are buying stocks people are pushing money for it to so like you have you have like yeah exactly an alternative source of like money to rely on to like for business continuity. But then, like another thing is that um, um, thinking um, about um, this going public is that um, Airbnb, at least for the next three years, will be hit, mm-hmm. just like the airline industry. And all the, in fact, the entire hospitality industry is going to be hit because of COVID-19. Those of people are not going to travel, at least for the next year, especially countries like the US and uh, Europe. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So, so that, so, it might affect their share Seriously. price, meaning their share price may not be that high. But then f- it means that if you are buying it, short sellers may not necessarily buy it. It's people who are buying it for the long run who may buy it a lot. Uh huh. So, yes, mm-hmm. okay. yeah, that's true. Because in, in the next 10 years or so probably 15 years. That's uh, I think every they said the, they lines the about three or four like lines very well. before. I mean, we the world might change by are. then. But I'm sure every so they will like that. They, they've been yeah, a new world. It's, it's just like how Netflix used to send out um, hard copies of CDs. So me, <laughs> and, I mean, and also to you have a company like General Electric, which has lived yeah. over hundreds of years. So me, so far the company is innovative with time. The share price, is <laughs> but then when it starts getting old, it will stagnate. Yeah. Then, um, if there's no much innovation, it's just stay as it is, or somehow buy it out and they die. But then it's yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause the, the general electric, if you stay, if you check their stock they are mo- price, exactly. they, they actually. I mean, they haven't been doing very well. They move between six to seven dollars, and then because it doesn't look they are, like they are comfortable. They improve. One day yeah, they are six dollars. I mean, they are big. Yeah, so, I mean, but they, they are not even getting big for long. Like, it's, it's my same like, arguments with Ken Westy. Like, um, I think right now it's changing a little bit. Careful now. Ashesi, yeah, the only difference is. between Ashesi and Ken Westy is that Ken Westy is older than Ashesi. But if you have to give Ashesi time to grow, oh. No, no, I'm let, let, let's let's be honest. Um, if 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 um if if you have to give no, it's not like I'm 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 saying anything negative about KNUSD, but then I mean I have to be objective. It's the truth. If if um you give Ashesi the same number of years you were giving KNUSD, um with the same rate of growth, you realize that Ashesi may either become at par or very close to KNUSD. KNUSD just has gotten time to prove itself. But then right now I've seen a new wave of um investing in the new form of education. Uh-huh. So at least they, they 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 have the advantage of the numbers and the credibility and stuff. So you can push and propel them further. And companies like Amazon, they've been re innovating from since they started. I think they are, I think their business has a mantra around innovation or something. That like they uh-huh. So like every day is like a startup. Every day is like a startup. Every day is like a startup. So I mean, it's it's something yeah, he calls it to, a one. Um, take into consideration. Okay. Sure in other news, that. otherwise we now. Yeah, exactly. We, 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 we oh, finish, finish. Back and all that. Finish. Yeah, I, I feel like right now people are realizing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, to back all of this, uh, I think people are realizing the quality uh, of education that like people are getting in mm-hmm. So 
gradually once they're able to find means of uh, funding. But it's not sad. It's not sad that Ashesi. But Salas and Obeng, it's not sad that Ashesi that is barely three decades old comes into the picture and starts undercutting. Uh, OGs in the system like KNUST and Ligon when it comes to employability of graduates. It's not sad because if anything at all, no, 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 Let, let's not be confused. Yeah. No, let's not be confused. Um, per our Ghanaian um, 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 system, work system, graduates from KNUST and from the traditional public universities still get more positions as compared to graduates from Ashesi. That's by virtue of the number of graduates they churn out each year. That's my point. Um, using statistics. But then, yeah. the quality of education a single individual yeah. gets from Ashesi with respect to attention and the fact that they broaden your horizon of understanding and they holistically change you. HM, so they train mm -hmm. the head, the hands, and the heart. <laughs> The, those are the three yeah, issues. They, 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 you know, they went yeah. there in spirit. <laughs> yeah, so, so they, they train these three. Buzz, so buzz. These are the three things you need to help you grow like you from, in whatever yeah. career you find yourself in. Because you need these things. No, but... Then these but others, I mean, these public institutions right I mean, now is wholesale I mean, because the numbers enough, are enough for the they don't really get attention for each US oh, Islander. I mean. They don't really get but, attention for each but student. You see, yes, the point is that, I said, but the uh, point uh, is, oh, we have a, it, it, a player, player comes into the field and is downright churning out <laughs> better quality than you. That might that is an indictment of some sort on the kind of work you are mm -hmm. doing with your students and. Someone could argue that because of the scale at which they are operating, the fact that they are government supported and they are autonomous and whatnot, they probably have their hands tied when it comes to doing a better job at it. But how is it possible that a university that just came onto the scene is turning out people who are performing way better and we can sit down and pretend it's okay? I think it's a, it's, it's a call. It's a call to us to do better. No, people are, people are not doing anything. We are okay always giving that crown of education to Ashesi. No. Oh, people my are now doing kind of things. Uh, people are know. now doing things. A typical example is the uh, innovation center. And they are... No, no, I mean, I'm being, I'm being honest. It's the innovation center. Thank you for cutting. Um, because we are pushing thing. students to think outside. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bro. Like me. I, uh, how the would I end up? The innovation center is the Dean College of Engineering. It, it isn't just KSC. But then, general, but then, no, but, but, but then, you see, center. change starts. You don't want outside. Well, and the uh, system, exactly. Of engineering and then the these systems can be replicated yeah, within other countries. You understand? So for me, Things mm. are changing gradually. But I mean, like, for start 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 agreement or something. Basically, that's okay, okay. Like I um, if I start saying things, I'm not supposed to say. But then... <laughs> no, not that. But then... But then... I heard she promised a lot of positive stuff. Because um, I have really heard the new VC's address. Did you hear the new VC's address? Looking at promoting <laughs> their school. Yeah. yeah, a lot of stuff that actually made... Mm. A lot of stuff that the job depends made on. sense. But okay, then, listen. Uh, that's <laughs> There's, uh, there's, this okay. came up in the news. Yeah, yeah. All right. PlayStation yeah, yeah. is exactly. limiting <laughs> the purchase of PlayStation 5 <laughs> to one shipping address. And they said this is to, yeah, per purchase, this is to avoid those who buy in bulk and resell and ensure per even distribution. And <laughs> to do that distribution to various households. And you know, the PlayStation should 5 will come in it. two forms the digital. Mm -hmm. And the one with the CD or CD compartment. Do you think the smart move? Why would you want to dictate the number of consoles one person can buy? And what is your problem with reselling? I think it's not a business to decide for the consumer. Yeah, 
Yeah. No, it's, it's like the whole um, high beast market. The high beast market is basically retail on retail. So far as there's um, and also demand yeah. and um, supply and the law of scarcity. So far as it's scarce in the system, people will, will pay more for it and they will essentially create the scarcity by buying it and making sure that they get all the supplies and start reselling it at a higher price. And that's what these people want to prevent because well, that's I didn't when a lot of people have to was pay. A time like like my sister they... wanted a turbo net. She paid almost double the amount for the for the turbo net just because MTN MTN yeah yeah MTN um, they have um, um they didn't have supply for some time. So so you see so that, that's that's how the whole high beast market is. Yeah, 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 they want yeah, to very prevent that because we are currently in a pandemic yeah, yeah. and it's not the company's fault. Too. The company that work is to just give it out at their yeah. se- um, their retail price and that's it but there's some people create artificial shortage by purchasing in bulk and then the later store and resell it like remember <laughs> someone uh, when this started, someone yeah. tried to go with yeah. hand sanitizers and it blew up in his face and the fish ah mm. see fish shells <laughs> now people people are selling it with sprinkles and free delivery they are bleeding and the fish shields <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Hundred so hundred thousand for twenty five cities. Yeah, before we were hundred thousand for two cities and three cities. Yeah, but by to a this point, I very much agree. But there are plenty of factors that I have to do with the aside what I've been able to say. Um example is given how people like the gaming community, like the the hunger for new things. It would definitely drive like the price of products. An example is I don't know if you guys are sneaking out your head, so mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. them, but an example is the Air Jordan ones. I think in the eighties or nineties, when the uh, when I partnered with Michael Jordan to release the Chicago ones or the first Air Jordan mm-hmm. ones, people were literally killing themselves to actually purchase one. So yeah, um, uh, I think it, it became news where. Like in a neighborhood, like some kill uh, some some kids mm. died just because they were trying to um, get edge or that ones, and then someone didn't understand why you should get one. As in, like, why can't I get one? So that can lead to people killing each other. And from this, so like a bit this in market where yeah. uh, the price of a sneaker is like one twenty dollars. Someone buys it and then sends it to StockX. StockX is like. The stock market for sneakers. <laughs> and <laughs> the same sneaker that goes for $300 or $120. Someone will sell it. Yeah. Someone will sell it for $2,000. The, the, the funny on thing stock about case. this is that it's, it's funny that the, uh, the product doesn't exist in your I've local. I realized that uh, when it comes so to obviously commerce, you pay that premium price really just because you want people to. are willing to buy and pay for it. The value people put on it. For me, that's the basic thing. At first, I used to have, um, I used to think yeah. that, oh, the, this price is this amount because maybe it's of yeah. a higher quality than something else, even though that might be true. But then in actual sense, people don't really um, try to cut, um, when, when they are looking at revenue streams, they don't really go by a strict, um, let's say I want to make this amount of profit margin. They, just, they can just look at the item and say that, oh, this item is packaged luxuriously enough. So even if it costs me 10 CDs to make, I can sell it for 80 CDs and people will still pay mm. that amount. So let me just sell it for 80 CDs and get my profit. And that's how most of them make money, especially our Ghanaian market. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they, they, also, they also have targets too. So like for the iPhone like this, the product team in... Um, Apple and other companies as well. They already have targets for the amount of money and products you generate. Yeah, so, and the PlayStation Five is actually it, it, very as, like as you They said it won't exceed a thousand dollars, but it's around you know, somewhere you under. If you price a particular product within a certain range, three ninety nine. Attract okay. a certain market, and then you realize how okay. oh, three, how it should be three hundred to four hundred. And then that's what the yeah. Implements. PlayStation mm-hmm. don't sell beyond four hundred. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's actually yeah. it's three ninety nine, three ninety nine for the yeah for the digital. Yes, yeah, so people deliberately 
uh, like short, so to speak, short the market just to drive the price up, and that's so what they want to do. Which is very cheap for a very like brand new um, space station. Yeah. But if someone should resell, the person might resell for like two. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll I'll be using several shipping too. addresses or stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. But right, guys, so we've been talking for a with that and then yeah. Um, yeah. sorry, we've been talking for more than <laughs> yeah. an hour now, and um, yeah. I think yeah. it's enough. Um, it's enough but content it's, for it's, the listeners today. No. They need to tune into another episode to listen to our sweet sweet voices. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's it's we've given them enough content for a day. All right. So are there any? Are there any? Yeah. <laughs> are there no. any? Um, are there any? Um, closing <laughs> words. Uh, does any of you want to bless anybody? Yeah, this is very random. <laughs> no. Bless. Uh, I'm ah, sorry, Silas, could you say again? Yeah. The things that have been 2020, 20, like, just, yeah, just stay open to the whole day. Sick, you see. It's nice at the end of the time, of course. I feel like I oh, you heard him well. in the middle of a TED talk. You were in the middle of a TED talk. I was I was <laughs> don't, don't, don't mind him. <laughs> wait, wait, which one should I say? Yeah, I should go <laughs> Silas Fauci Bimpo. I'm just saying, hopefully. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not speaking. <laughs> just saying. Charlie. That's all. Oh, Charlie, because if if we don't get this thing right, people people will really get it. Like, I mean, it's like, it's even, as even now, as LinkedIn, now, as now, LinkedIn like, cut like, stuff. I heard LinkedIn way. cut stuff as well. They plan to make cuts to do like that stuff. Even LinkedIn. Even the NBA, Can you imagine like, the irony? In you know, like, when you play in LinkedIn, the people who LinkedIn is cutting stuff. I should tell you to each other. Come on, shit. It's definitely the process. Yeah. Sure. Come on, shit. LinkedIn. All right, so um, Silas, thank you so much for your wise words. Um, for me, there, just make sure you meet twenty twenty one. That's the most important right, thing. Right, the rest right. is secondary. If you don't see any major um difference in your life, don't worry. Even though it's questionable, but then don't worry, it's normal. Um, you should just you yeah, should just continue um living. But then um remember to build capacity, read books, have conversations with people, listen to this podcast, and uh, Maxwell, over to you. Maxo, who are you texting? Back. Yeah. Oh, he. Um, no, I'll be oh, here next. Uh, his week video, next his video was. Uh, uh, was yeah. Only for last week. All right. <laughs> so, yeah. Any last words, Maxo? Yeah, Salah should be a regular. Yeah. I think I think Salah should. He's jobless like us. I don't know you if should be available. You have yes. Time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because um, I think the boys only was supposed to come yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like, I, I, I can definitely make time. Right. They depend on the schedule. Yeah, yeah. Let's you. We should just scrap. We should just scrap. <laughs> we should just scrap the. the hey, you go book my son there. Make me scrap him, bro. Hey, I mean, <laughs> I think I think we should do <laughs> boys <laughs> only for a while until we get people booked. No pressure. You get it. Let's just do it to get people to jump into 